And I want to believe that uh, we are in it together because climate change is a global phenomenon, but its effects are felt at local level, point number one. And we are in it because we believe we are all responsible adults and youths who want to make sure we extract only that which is good for us now and leave sufficient for the next generation. So sustainable development, both in terms of economics, social and environment is key. And the bottom line, we cannot talk climate change without pinning it into the bigger development agenda, which is a world free of hunger and poverty. How then should we strive to make it happen? We need to talk to each other. We cannot have empty mouths that don't have capacity or legitimacy for what they're saying. So we need to build that capacity. And we need to make sure that in talking to a global platform, we have policies that govern the way we do business. And those policies need to be evidence-based. It's a challenging arena. We are moving from local, where there is indigenous knowledge, there is all sorts of conflicting powers against pulling out that evidence. You move to the national level, the terrain is complex. You go to the continental level, Africa-wide, it's even worse. Then we have to take all this to the global level. How then do we do it? We need to invest in research. It's got to be local research. It's got to start at local level and it's got to be owned by the locals. The statistics are clear and uh, for us in Africa, agriculture remains the backbone of our economies. That's the face of the rural home. What you're seeing there is an 80-year-old grandmother who now has the responsibility of raising all those orphans, having been a matron of six educated children who have since died from HIV and AIDS. What is it that we have to offer? Women are the backbone of the African economies, but we have not done enough to amplify <coughs> their voice and to give them the space to create policies that will meet them halfway. Now all this, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sharing to say, before we can even talk about intervention, we need to understand the local. Now look at the players and how confused the terrain is. Yeah. Now the issue is find your space, claim your territory and hold strong, otherwise they will push you out. We have our own universities in Africa. We've left research, unfortunately, to independent individual consultants. And uh, researchers at our universities are in the business of teaching. First, because there is no money. So what they teach is what they were taught or what they Google. But they are so scared of following the development agenda. How do you teach the next generation to, to, to leave themselves out of poverty if you cannot follow the development agenda. There is no investment in developing databases that are communally owned. We continue to use uh, written publications to disseminate our information, and yet we know some of our countries have up to 40% illiteracy levels. What then should we be doing? What's the absorptive capacity for all this that we are beaming on Twitter, do they hear it? And what are the social networks that exist around them to support their movement up the line? <coughs> the major message on this is that you cannot improve what you don't measure. And that is why research is key. We need to align our research agenda to the development agenda. We need to build the capacity for this to happen. And we need to use the tools that we have.